which companies are going to get broken up and when? Um, I think that when you look at the really large big tech ones, um, Facebook, Google, Amazon, um, maybe Microsoft, not really, maybe Apple, um, but in, in, in order of probability, Facebook first, then Google, then I think all the other ones are a little bit more delayed. Um, it's going to be those, and it's probably in the next, you know, sort of like five to ten year time frame. Facebook is the most obvious one just because uh, they touch many politicians where they live, eat, breathe, and get paid. Um, Google will be next just because I think that it is, uh, it is, it, it winning has not proved to be successful. If you were able to capture your ecosystem's margin and then solve cancer, people would say, capture more margin. But if all you're doing is buying pistachios for your engineers and, you know, just fucking around with all kinds of nonsense, it's just, it's not productive capitalism. So fuck the pistachios, stop it, and allow the thousand flowers to bloom, so to speak. It's better for the world that that happens. Um, no, I mean, I love pistachios, by the way. <laughs> Don't get so, me wrong. Facebook. You work there, you help build it, you're friends with Cheryl and Mark. It's one of our largest investments at Altimeter. Stock's up 300% over the last five years, twice the performance of Google, and only trades at 10 times EBITDA. It's growing at 30%. Um, but pretend I'm Cheryl for a second. Why are you busting my ass? No, I, I, I'm not. I'm just sort of a, an objective. Why are you such a critic of what we're doing? No, I'm not. I, I actually think that uh, what they serve is really powerful in the following very basic, simple idea. Um, Facebook is probably, it's better that you go on Facebook and fight there than fight in the streets. And it's probably better that you have one massive honeypot where all kinds of bad and good things happen than a bunch of distributed honeypots, which, you know, is, is the technical equivalent of whack-a-mole. Like, there's nobody here, if you're in an election cycle, you'd be hard-pressed to suggest a number two company after Facebook. So my point is, we all know where the bodies are buried. So in that way, it's really good. And they do a lot of good. So that's good. My perspective on Facebook is the reason why the market gives it a small multiple is because they don't believe their earning potential is durable. And the reason they don't believe it is because they are pretty sure that in the next you know, handful of years, not 25 years, but in the next 10 or so years, governments start to act because they care about their own self-preservation. Right. You know, if you get very reductionist on it, at the end of the day, that's what they care about. And so they're going to legislate to protect their monopoly which is the ability to have power. I mean, if I owned equal parts of Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook, am I, am I really worse off than if I own just one monolithic Facebook? As a shareholder, should I really care? Um, well, as a shareholder, you're trying to buy the longest term of, uh, you know, Right, so I, I might argue that those companies earnings. would each perform better if they were separate, not, not I, worse. I, I have no idea whether they would perform better, the same, or worse. Um, governments will break them up not because of a business perspective and not because of shareholder value. They will insert themselves into the running of that company and eventually into the running of Google because it gets in the way of their own monopoly. It, it introduces a level of competition that they don't want to see in right. their own home market. So this is what I'm saying where I don't have a real moral or ethical perspective uh, on whether you, know, you should work, if you're Cheryl, whether you should work there or not. Uh, I think shareholders should have a moral and ethical perspective on whether they want to own it. Employees clearly underwrite that by going to the office every day. I'm just saying very objectively, they have, whether they like to or not, stepped into a dynamic where other governments can now compete off their home turf through this one company. And so if you're a monopoly, which the US government is in the United States, you're not going to want other countries competing with you. If you're a monopoly in France, the French don't want other competitors, other governmental actors 
in their home market. They're willing to tolerate it under the radar, which is what espionage and all this other stuff has always meant, been meant to be, but not where you can go to a portal and buy ads with a credit card.